Well, hello everyone and welcome to Lifestyle Makes Sense. I'm Melissa and I'm here to disperse some of my investment funds. And to be clear, this is not my quarterly investment payout that I normally receive at the end of each quarter. This payment actually kind of came as a surprise to me. But in the beginning, when I invested in my friend's business, they have a uh, delivery business where they pick up and deliver furniture and all types of things. And when I initially invested in their business, they needed a van. And so we did go in together to purchase the van. And if by chance they grew big enough to get another van or ever needed to sell the van that we purchased together, then any profit would be split between the two of us. And they have been thriving and I am so glad that I did the proper research and took the time to really um, take the time to invest in them. And that's a question that someone had asked me probably about a month ago. And I, I really didn't know or care to try to explain it only because there are so many videos on YouTube and other places about how to invest your money and this and that. And I'm not an investment broker. I, I didn't, I don't have a degree in any of that. I just basically went with what I knew. And what I knew was I had to do some type of research. And doing that research, I came up with five different ways to really help myself know whether I should invest in um, an investment for myself or invest in, in it, something dealing with somebody else or a business or whatever. And I don't typically do business investments, but what I found is that with any investment, it's always a risk. There's always a risk, no matter how good or valuable the product, the service, or the stock may be, the interest may be, it still is there's a risk attached to it. So the first question would be, Would you, are you willing to lose this risk? If it falls on its face within a week, would you be willing to lose that as a risk? So that was like a main top priority question. But when I was discovering the answers to that question for myself, I came up with five different ways that I feel are best for me to determine if I need to invest in something. I will share the five things, but I just wanted to put that out there because like I said, I'm not a financial advisor or counselor or anything like that. These are just based on my personal experience. So what I have here is $725. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, 600, 20, 40, 60, 81, 700, 5, 10, 15, 20, 720, 21, 2, 3, 4, and 5. 725 dollars is what I have. And like I said, this was the very first purchase that they needed. It was the largest purchase at the time. They needed a van and they ended up selling it for way more than we actually bought it for. And this was the split between the profit. I didn't want the full amount what I had invested in the vehicle because, you know, vehicles depreciate. I can't hold that against them. But of course, if you go into business with someone and that's your option to do and you choose to do it different, that's that's fine too. It's whatever the two of you agree to. So they um, receive $725. I receive $725. And I'm good with that. And this is totally separate from my quarterly payout that they um, are responsible for paying me back. And I'll probably get that, my next one, maybe in June sometime. So what I'm gonna do with this 725, I wanna be able to fund all of my sinking funds. So what I did was took most of my sinking funds that are of interest to me, and I put them on a spreadsheet here, and I came up with a quarterly amount. Quarter one is already past us, so I can't go back and do that. I can, but I don't want to. I've already fully funded my savings for this, my subs and apps, and my scooter. And today I'll be doing my mortgage, which is 222. I'll be doing my um, groceries, which is 125. And then I will be doing vacation, which is 200. 
and I will be taking that out. Let's see, 222, 1, 2, 20, 21, and 22. And this will go into my sinking fund envelope. Uh, let's see, the next is groceries, which is 125. One twenty-five, and that will go in the grocery sinking fund envelope. And lastly, vacation. I need to start my vacation fund, and I have not just focused in on a vacation fund because I haven't even planned a vacation yet. So, uh, but I do want to start nipping at it, and this will start get that started off. So this amount will go into the sinking fund envelopes. Now the rest of this, I'm gonna grab my book. And what I'm doing is I'm saving the page number. Each um, page has a clear envelope on it. And I'm saving the amount um, at the bottom, which is each page number. And um, I've been saving a good little bit throughout. I want to put 153 in on page 153. And um, I think this is carrying over when his friend Candlewick tried to get him to go to Funville and Pinocchio is asking him, um, is it really true? Pinocchio asks th that boys never have to study in Funville. And that's right. Never. Candle Candlewick said, what a wonderful place. Pinocchio said with glee. So he's all excited about this so-called place that little boys don't have to study, don't have to do homework. Um, Candlewick had explained to him, I think over here on page 150, I already stuffed that page about this place. Uh, <laughs> he, he just made it seem like the best place for little boys to be. So I'm going to put 153 in this page, 140, 145, 150, 123. Any unplanned or unexpected money that I receive, I do plan to stuff my book of savings with it. And what's left is $25. And I want to go over to page 25 and put it in there. And this page actually starts a new um, chapter. Chapter 3 uh, says, while Geppetto was being taken off to prison. Prison? When did he go to prison? Wait a minute. I missed something. Pinocchio ran as fast as he could across the fields to get back home. Once there, Pinocchio sat happily on the floor. All of a sudden, he heard a strange noise that made him sit up and look all around the room. Who's that? He asked. Crick, crick, crick. It's me, came the reply. So I'm guessing that's Jimmy the Cricket. Is 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 he in Pinocchio? Is that his character? We're going to put 25 in here on this page. But, okay, over here on page 24, yeah, I see him being hauled off to prison, it said. But why is he having to go to prison? Y'all, I have never read the full story of Pinocchio. We'll have to see. I haven't I haven't stuffed those pages yet to tell me um, why he's going to prison. So, But anywho, during this little short segment here, I will be revealing how I choose to invest in something, um, whether it's a property a uh, business or what have you, a uh, stock or something, which I don't do much stock investing. I did try it in the past. I just don't think it's for me, so I don't think I'll ever do it again. But with every investment, there's always research. If you're not a researcher, then you may have a few initial issues with investing because unless you're going to let someone else guide you through the way or you're going to just believe everything somebody else tells you. That's dangerous. In many, many ways, that's dangerous. When you think of investments, um, like I said, you may hear words like stock market, real estate, Wall Street, that those types of things there. My main focus actually is real estate. Land is the one thing they're never making any more of. Nope. Right? Earth, nope. go get you some. But I have invested in business investments. You know, I'm not going to wear my money as much. I want to put it in other places. And those are two difficult things to decide upon if you ask me because when it comes to businesses you never know if they will flip or if they'll fast track if they'll take off really really fast real estate on the other hand is a good investment but there again you know if you're basing it on 
you know, what the current interest rates are, if you're going to be able to flip it really quick, if that's what you're investing in it for, then it's always uncertain. Every investment is uncertain. No matter how much you make in the beginning, the quick beginning, there's always a chance that that won't always be the case. There's always that chance. So investment is just a decision that you have to make, but you have to make all of this prior to investing. You don't invest in it and then you try to figure out later, uh oh, was that a good thing to do? You know, <laughs> it's kind of like buying a car. Even if you can buy a new car, you still have to be able to upkeep the car, maintain the car, put gas in the car in order to get the best use of it. So even though you're investing in something, you still want to be able to get the best use of it throughout your investment, if that makes sense. I personally, like I said, I'm not a financial advisor, none of that. When I was 23 years old, I had 35 credit cards and I had A1 credit, but I didn't have any type of financial sense about it. I didn't have any type of investment sense. Um, it was something that I learned the older I got in life. I learned it then. And even with investing in property and houses and such, I felt at that time, that was something that old people do. You know, young people don't have time and money to invest their money in things like that because we need to travel, we need to shop, we need to go out to eat, we need to party, we need to do whatever. I have other priorities right now, not shopping. And I don't wanna talk about it anymore. So yeah, my lifestyle and my view of things at that time was not very investment savvy at all, financial savvy even. I just had to grow into it because I have been asked this question. Sorry it took me so long to decide whether I want to put this video together and I felt this was a good time to do so. The business that I invested in, I only have one business investment now that's belonging to someone else. With that one, the first thing I had to learn because these were friends of mine, these are friends of mine that came to me and wanted this investment done and wanted me to invest. So that's kind of iffy number one, you know, do I need to invest with friends? Do I need to mix money with friends? It's always a touchy subject that you have to decide. I had to remove my emotions. My emotions had to be gone. Investing and emotions to me are not a good match because you can feel passionate about an investment, but you can't invest just because you're passionate. You must be able to distinguish between, you know, the good, the bad, the right, the wrong, the location, the vision, because if you're going to invest and that's all you're going to do, because that's what I want to do. I didn't want to have any input in how they handled their business. I needed to trust them to handle their business, how they knew how to handle business. Now, if I needed input to be an inputter inside of their business, telling them, no, don't make that decision. No, I wouldn't buy that. No, 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 no. I, I, I wouldn't have been able to do it because I don't have time for that. I, if, I, if I needed another business to invest in, I would put that time in my own personal investment, my personal business. But I had to remove my emotions and let their yes mean yes and no mean no whenever they made decisions according to their business. And I had to trust those decisions that they were in the best interest of the business and in my investment. The other thing I had to learn was I had to add some hindsight. We always say, oh, if I knew now what I knew then, I wouldn't have done or I should have done or I could have done this. I had to take my past lessons, not necessarily with these two that I invested in, but just in general, I had to take my past lessons, you know, what worked, what didn't work was timing a factor, money, location, my past hindsight answered a lot of questions for me that made me make my decision to invest into my friend's business. And I needed to add that hindsight at the beginning. So um, in real estate, we call it due diligence. You have to do your due diligence, do your homework, do your research, do that. I added in my past learning lessons and that enabled me to kind of make a decision. And my hindsight included knowing them, you know, they weren't just a willy nilly coming to me wanting to invest. 
I knew them. We were, we are friends. So we've been friends a good little while. So knowing them and how they handle their business and their personal finances and so forth, that was part of my hindsight of saying, hmm, well, I know in the past they have done this, that, and the third. So, you know, that was a determining factor in me making a decision. The other determining factor was knowing before I grow. So I had to know what area they were in, what they were investing, what the business was. I didn't have to know details of how to do the business, but I needed to know details of what it could do, what it could be. So that was another determining factor that I had for myself. You know, I did do research about the business, but not necessarily about how the business is ran. Like, I don't really care how the, I didn't care how the um, customers would be found. I didn't care um, how the customers would pay, which can be a determining factor in many instances. So like I said, don't base your decisions on what I do, but I had my reasons for not needing to know those specifics about their business. I just needed to know if that business, particular business was feasible in the area that they were going to have it in. And if push comes to shove, if nobody um, in the area, you know, used that business, could it be sold to someone else who may live in another area where it could be used? So all those were determining factors, knowing before you start growing. The next one is don't get lost. I, I couldn't lose myself with, oh, this could make a big profit for me. This could make a big turnaround for me. I couldn't get caught up in that. Again, it goes back to those emotions. I couldn't let my physical emotions get involved back then. Here, I can't let my financial emotions get involved. I had to make a roadmap of the past, present, and future. And then I had to include some in-betweens um, with some possible roadblocks, dead ends, stop signs, red flags, yellow flags, green flags. I needed to know all of that. I had to then say, well, what if this happened and what if that happened and what are all the pluses the green flags well what are some yellow flags some could be's what are some red flags some don't some definite nots you know i had to do that and this is all without them i'm not sitting down in a room with them discussing any of this this is all my personal homework that i that i'm doing behind the scenes before i say yes to them and then I look at their contract of what they proposed and I start making check marks. Anything that's a red flag, I red flag it. Anything that's a yellow, a green, or I need to, an explanation for, I mark it. So that's when I'm going through their proposal. Um, initially, I only had the business idea. When I get down to this area, this part, I'm closer to making my decision but I need to have some answers. If it's a real well drawn up proposal, more than likely you shouldn't have no more than five questions, I'll say. But if you got a lot of holes in that proposal, mm, you may want to tell them to go, go back to the drawing board and fill in the blanks as it were. So, because if I have too many questions about this business, something's, something's not right for me. I don't need to have that many questions. I need everything to be written down on paper. I need your proposal to make sense to me on paper. Lastly, there's a thing that used to be called microfilm. It still exists. For those of you who are, I'll say, maybe 40 plus, you probably know or have heard of microfilm. They came on little different pieces of film and that little piece of film held so much information. Now, when it comes to property investing or business investments or whatever, this is important. It's important. Know your information and keep it in a safe place. When you have all the little bits and pieces of information and you can put it together and it makes sense to you, as small as it may be, it needs to make sense to you. And when it makes sense to you, then that's when you'll start seeing the positives or the negatives. 
So this part of your um, due diligence, your research will determine what your percentage is. If you own part of the property or if you own part of the business, it'll determine what your return investment is, how often you'll be repaid, the dates, times, locations of how you'll be repaid. You'll know where the business is at every step of the way because you'll ask for updates about the business every 30 days or every quarter or every six months, however you decide to do it. Am I able to access this business's paperwork if I need to? So those are all types of questions that information can tell you. I need to be able to pull one sheet of paper. I don't want a big stack of papers. I don't want a big stack of papers because when I need to go directly to something, I want to be able to shift through it and say, that's the film that is on right there. Go to that page right there. That page will explain this, that, and the third. That's what I want to be able to do. And I need to be able to do that at any given time, as long as that business have owed me money. Now, most of the time, this is like my third business outside of myself that I've invested in. Most of the time in the past, what I've done is just told them, here's the investment money. You use it how you need to use it. This is my return that I'm requesting. This is when I need my return returned. Some, um, sometimes I'll have an open end date. I'll say anytime within that first five years of you being in business, I need it all paid back. Or anytime within the first year, I need this amount paid back. Um, with this particular business that I, this, this business that I'm invested in now, uh, originally, we did have, we left the table open for two options. They could pay me monthly or they could pay me quarterly. In the beginning, they, they did start paying me monthly, but they determined as business owners of their business that it was in their best interest and my best interest to pay me quarterly. And I see the reasoning behind that. So when they sent the little proposal and told me why they thought it would be better, that was one of the original options, remember? So it wasn't new to me. It wasn't foreign to me. It wasn't like, uh-oh, they trying to change up. Uh-oh, they changing something. No, that was one of the original options in the beginning. I chose the monthly option really because I didn't know how fast it would take off. And I guess you might say, well, wouldn't you have chosen the quarterly one to give them time to build up business or what have you? No, because I knew from hindsight that they already had customers. They already had customers without having an established business. So they already had cash flow coming in, but it wasn't enough to just invest in everything they needed to invest in and still have money to run the business off of. So I knew that part from my hindsight that I mentioned earlier. So that option, 30 day option, every 30 day option was the best for me at the time, but I didn't know how fast it would take off. And then by the time they showed me their numbers three months in, I'm like, whoa, whoa. So yeah, you can pay me quarterly. I trust you now. I trust it now to pay me quarterly. I trust the business now. So that's basically it. Remove emotions, add hindsight, know before you grow, don't get lost, and use your microfilming process to help you make a good decision on whether you want to invest or not invest in a property. That's how I do mine. I'm not an advisor, but... If you have any questions, feel free to ask. So thank you guys for watching and I appreciate you being here. Enjoy yourself, whatever time, day or night it is, wherever you are, enjoy yourself. Bye-bye.